Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, the author of The Martian and Artemis. We have a blurb, so I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my sticky tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... A lone astronaut, an impossible mission, an ally he never imagined. Ryland Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission, and if he fails, humanity and the Earth itself will perish. Except that right now, he doesn't know that, he can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time, and he's just been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home, with nothing but two corpses for company. His crewmate's dead, his memories fuzzily returning, Ryland realises that an impossible task now confronts him. Hurtling through space on this tiny ship, it's up to him to puzzle out an impossible scientific mystery and conquer an extinction level threat to our species. And with the clock ticking down and the nearest human being light years away, he has to do it alone. Or does he? An irresistible interstellar adventure as only Andy Weir could imagine it, Project Hail Mary is a tale of discovery, speculation and survival to rival the Martian, while taking us to places it never dreamed of going. So I quite like a couple of the hints there, um, it's, it does have mystery vibes to it, it's more of a thriller than a mystery really, but it does have mystery elements. And I also like this, uh, the device of him having amnesia and it sort of, his memory slowly returning. I don't always like that, but it was done well here. I think it's just done gratuitously a lot of times, whereas here there was actually a point to it. So it's dedicated for John, Paul, George and Ringo, which is good because the Beatles, we all like the Beatles. So uh, let's get some tabs going. So like I learned things about science, for example this. Cool thing about pendulums, the time it takes for one to swing forward and backward, the period, won't change no matter how wide it swings. If it's got a lot of energy, it will swing farther and faster, but the period will still be the same. This is what mechanical clocks take advantage of to keep time. That period ends up being driven by two things and two things only, the length of the pendulum and gravity. So I like this little line. She resumed reading her tablet, the conversation was over, and she'd ended it by laying down what my students would call a sick burn. So uh, they're experimenting on this stuff called astrophage, which basically this is what the extinction level thing is. Uh, it's like devouring energy from the sun, which leads to some interesting situations because basically that means the planet is cooling, so global warming has actually bought us some time. But yeah, our main character, Grace, he's uh, investigating the astrophage back on Earth. So, um... We get, really? She set the tablet down. Killing it did the trick. I think so. It's not black anymore. Light is getting through. Whatever weird effect was blocking it isn't anymore. How did you do it? What killed it? I penetrated the outer cell membrane with a nano syringe. You poked it with a stick. No, I said. Well, yes. But it was a scientific poke with a very scientific stick. It took you two days to think of poking it with a stick. You be quiet. And we get a reference to Saar Bomber. Uh, guy called Dimitri's talking about it. Made by my country, 50, me 50 megatons, boom. It's the largest nuclear bomb ever made. And uh, that was referenced in a short story I wrote over Christmas, a couple of days ago. So uh, Grace meets an alien and uh, we get, that's an alien, I just saw an alien. Not just an alien ship, an alien being. I mean, just his claw uh, hand, but yeah. Well, I, I say his hand, but maybe it's her hand or some other pronoun I don't have a word for. They might have 17 biological sexes for all I know, or none. No one ever talks about the really hard parts of first contact with intelligent alien life. Pronouns. Very 2023, isn't it, Shay? Mm. So he um, has to, he's communicating with this alien and um, he luckily he finds out the alien sleeps and he goes, oh, thank God. I can't imagine explaining sleep to someone who's never heard of it. Hey, I'm gonna fall unconscious and hallucinate for a while. By the way, I spend a third of my time doing this. And if I can't do it for a while, I go insane and eventually die. No need for concern. So as I say, it kind of alternates between being uh, back on Earth and kind of flashbacks to his memory of that and then being out in the middle of space. So when he's thinking about being back on Earth, we get another day, another staff meeting. Who would have thought saving the world could be so boring? And um, they have to develop a, a way to keep people kind of in a, a medically induced coma while the ship is flying to its destination. And um, only like one in 7,000 or so people are actually able, they have the genes that can survive it. Um, and even then it's not proven, which is why Ryland wakes up with two dead bodies. But um, it was just really cool because it was talking about like AI and new healthcare procedures and all of this stuff. And I'm editing a book for a client about that at the moment. So he meets the Russians and we get, um, Hello, Ilya Oh, hello, fireworks. Hello, Ilya Kina lunged forward and hugged Strat. I'm here to die for Earth. Pretty awesome, yes. I leaned to Dimitri. Are all Russians crazy? 
Yes, he said with a smile. It's the only way to be Russian and happy at the same time. That's dark. That's Russian. So we get this little bit of conversation between two of the potential crew members. So they have the main crew and the backup crew, knowing that whoever gets sent on this mission, it's a suicide mission. There's no return. So anyway, we get this, um, where's Annie, I asked. He sat back down. Even while seated, he kept a, p a firm, perfect posture. She so had to use the facilities. She should be back shortly. I sat down and opened my backpack. You know, you can call me Ryland. We're all PhDs here. I think first names are fine. I'm sorry, Dr. Grace. That is not how I was raised. However, you may call me Martin if you wish. Thanks. I pulled out my laptop and fired it up. How have you been lately? I have been very well, thank you. Dr. Shapiro and I have begun a sexual relationship. I paused. Mm, okay. I thought it prudent to inform me. He opened his notebook and set a pen beside it. There should be no secrets within the core mission group. Sure, sure, I said. I mean, it shouldn't be a problem. You're the primary science position and Annie's the alternate. There's no scenario where you would both be on the same mission, but I mean, your relationship. Yes, you are correct, Dubois said. I'll be setting out on a suicide mission in under a year, and if for some reason I am deemed unfit or unable, she will go on the suicide mission. We are aware of this, and we know the relationship can only end in death. We live in bleak times, I said. He folded his hands in front of him. Dr. Shapiro and I do not see it that way. We are enjoying very active sexual encounters. Oh, and then Annie comes back in, Dr. Shapiro, and she goes, Sorry, sorry, I had to pee, like, so bad, said the world's smartest and most accomplished microbiologist. My back teeth were floating. And uh, they have to get a sample from this, this uh, alien world, and so we get, it's a simple idea, but also stupid. Thing is, when stupid ideas work, they become genius ideas. We'll see which way this one falls. So a flashback to when he's on this uh, aircraft carrier preparing for the mission. He's in his office. It wasn't a large office, but you're lucky to have any personal space at all on an aircraft carrier. Before it held the high honour of being my office, the room was a storage locker for bathroom supplies. The crew had 3,000 butts that needed daily wiping. I got to keep the room as my office until the next time we were in port. Then they'd fill it up with more supplies. I was approximately as critical as toilet paper. So uh, the reason it's dedicated to the Beatles, there are these Beatles that are like automated devices that they're going to use to send data back to Earth. Um, and so the scientist names them John, Paul, George and Ringo. Uh, and his test one is called Pete, um, because Pete, Pete Best was uh, the drummer for the, uh, the Beatles before Ringo. And, um, and he goes, I'm going to get that astrophage now. I've got to make sure these Beatles will be able to get back. Okay. He frowned. Get back. It's a song by the Beatles. Sure, okay. He spun on his heel and left. Some people got no appreciation for the classics. But Shay likes the Beatles. She likes Eleanor Rigby. Don't you, Shay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I like this little bit. He games the system to get some painkillers from the computer. I just lost the game. Um, so he goes, computer, painkillers. Additional dose available in three hours and four minutes. I frowned. Computer, what is the current time? 7.15 p.m. Moscow Standard Time. Computer, set time to 11 p.m. Moscow Standard Time. Clock set complete. Computer, painkillers. The arms hand me a package of pills and a bag of water. I gobble them down. What a stupid system. Astronauts trusted to save the world but not to monitor their painkiller doses. Stupid. But I like how they have not got a failsafe. They've not expected someone's just going to change the time on the clock. Okay, so we get this cool bit um, where they're talking about how they want to die. Awkward topic, but one that had to be covered. These three were going to give their lives just so the rest of us could have a fighting chance. The least we could do was help them die on their own terms. So uh, Dubois wants to um, uh, suffocate it with, with nitrogen. Um, then we get one of them goes, I want heroin. I've been a good girl all my life, no drugs, limited sex. I want to experience massive pleasure before I die. People die from heroin all the time, must be very nice. I rubbed my temples. You want to die from a heroin overdose? Not immediately, she said. I want to enjoy. Start with normal effective dose. Get high. Addicts all agree first few uses are best. Then downhill from there. I want to feel those first few doses. Then overdose when the time is right. Um, and then the leader, he wants to have a gun. He says, I'll be the last to die. If anything goes wrong with either of your methods, I'll be on hand with the weapon just in case. And then the one who wants to overdose on heroin says, don't shoot me if I look like I'm having a good time. So he says the hardest part about having to save humanity and work with aliens is to come up with names for stuff. So we get a reference to a hard day's night. Um, the alien says, that sentence makes no sense. It's an earth saying from a song and I've been working like a dog. And that reminds him about the Beatles that he has, which could be his salvation. 
And we kind of get a little bit about antibiotic resistance, although Weir doesn't talk about how actually that's being driven by factory farming and uh, feeding antibiotics to animals, not to prevent, not to stop diseases, but to make them grow bigger, you know? And we get this great little line, so uh, he says to Rocky, on Earth we have a scary, deadly creature called a spider. You look like one of those, just so you know. Good, proud, I am scary space monster. You are leaky space blob. So the alien says to him, fist me. And he says, it's fist bump, but yeah. And yeah, we have a kilogram of heroin. That's how much is taken up onto the uh, onto the ship. And then we get the final, um, like the final chapter, which I thought was very moving. There's a bit of a twist towards the end, I suppose. And he's uh, basically he's living with the Iridians, with the with the aliens. He goes, anyway, that means I can finally eat meat. Yes, that's right. I'm eating human meat, but it's my own meat, and I don't feel bad about it. So uh, he's eating me burgers, which are like basically genetically engineered burgers based on his own DNA and stuff. Interesting stuff. It's kind of what the, the, the wreck and the future of, um, you know, general burgers is going to be. Because if you make lab grown meat, then you don't have a lot of the uh, cruelty that's associated with, with factory farming. So yeah, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Um, I think this was... To me, I enjoyed this more than The Martian. I think it shows that he is a serious novelist, not a one-trick pony. I mean, I did enjoy Artemis, but a lot of people didn't, but I think this is probably the best of his books. It really excites me as well. I kind of want to see what he's got coming uh, coming up for his next. He's definitely a good ideas man. But also, as well as being this being having like elements of mystery and thriller to it, you also learn things, which is always nice, you know? So overall, I gave Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir a four out of five, and a strong one at that. So yeah, but that's what I made of Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.